You walk into an art gallery. How many male nudes do you see? How many passive male nudes do you see? John Berger observes, men look at women. Women watch themselves being looked at, highlighting the difference between how genders see themselves and each other, and the entrapment women can feel in their minds through the eternal male gaze. Throughout history, men have looked at women, and men have painted women to be seen by other men. Yet, who are married to these men, and who are their daughters? Until recent times, women have only ever seen themselves through the eyes of a man, and men have only ever seen us as a means to pander to their, to their gaze and their desires. I'm going to discuss how women have been represented through the microcosm of Botticelli's sister paintings, Birth of Venus and Primavera. Firstly, Birth of Venus. The story of Venus is that she was made from a man and the sea, ignoring female sexuality altogether. However, there is the argument that the sea is an entirely feminine force since it comes from nature. This is the stance Botticelli takes. We see Venus arrive fully formed on a clam, which is a euphemism for the female reproductive organs. However, if I try to stand in the same pose as Venus, I realize it's impossible I'm going to fall over. It's a body that can never be. This is because female nudes throughout history have been just to be looked at. They're not bodies to be celebrated as bodies that eat, talk, play. They are simply to be seen. Nowadays, we still have this, but we do it to ourselves. We Photoshop and edit photos to, be to become bodies that cannot be, just to pander to the male gaze and the patriarchal beauty standards we have in society. However, looking at Primavera, we have a very different side of Venus. We see she is cuffing her belly, and above her, the trees part to form a halo, which is symbolic of the Virgin Mary. Immediately, we see her as a maternal figure, not a sensual one. This is emphasized by Zephyr chasing Chloris, who turns into Flora, as we see the flowers coming out of her mouth. And interestingly, there are 500 different species of plant in the foliage. So we really have this huge celebration of fertility, of life, of maternity. However, we still have the three graces. These were very popular in the Roman times with sculptors because they allowed them to show each part of a woman's body. So we still have our necessary eye candy for the 15th century. However, comparing these two pictures, they are very reminiscent of the madonna whore dichotomy coined by Freud. This essentially states that men love the Madonna, but they desire the whore. And I chose these two pictures because they are the each extreme. We have Venus as the Virgin Mary, the ultimate Madonna, but we also have Venus as herself, the goddess of love, of sexuality, of sensuality. Feminist theory states that this complex was sort of came about because men got scared of women's sexual prowess during the second wave. However, we can already see this far before in the 15th century. Interestingly, in a study of 108 heterosexual men, they found that those men who had thinking affiliated with this dichotomy had far worse relationships with women. So not only is it harmful for women to see ourselves like this, it also impacts men. I suppose what I've been trying to say is that we need more women artists, and we need, we need their art to be shown. Because we also have eyes and we have minds, and it's important that we see ourselves as people, as beings, as complex, rather than simple objects to be looked at. Thank you.